Hello everyone, this is Katie with the Lynx Resource Center. I am the parent advocate here. Today we're going to do a quick training on de-escalation strategies for challenging behaviors. So before we discuss some strategies, let's define de-escalation. De-escalation is the process of calming down a situation before it escalates further. It is helping to slowly bring the temperature down before it reaches a boiling point. This is critically this is a critically important skill for all educators and parents because children and young adults feel overwhelmed and angry sometimes, like we all do. With that being said, learning to de-escalate situations is not always easy. It requires practice and a toolbox of techniques. Sometimes you will need multiple strategies or trying different techniques to see what works in that moment. Challenging behaviors do happen. It's important to note that there is always a reason for the behaviors, even if we don't see that reason in the moment. Often, kids and teens might feel overwhelmed, angry, frustrated, or worried about something going on. With that said, how we as adults handle those challenging behaviors can make all the difference. We, choose, we can choose to engage in an argument with kids and teens, or we can help to de-escalate the situation. De-escalation is the answer. So a question commonly asked is, doesn't this mean that we are letting our kids and teens get away with challenging behaviors and outbursts? Simply put, no. De-escalation is about helping kids calm and think clearly so we can try to get to the root of the problem and work through the challenges together. There might be a need for logical consequences later, such as cleaning up a mess, but that comes only after the child is calm and can rationalize their actions. As always, the goal is to help the child calm down so they can think clearly and make good choices moving forward. And if we want kids and teens to make the best choices, we have to help get them calm first. De-escalation strategies are the tools in the toolbox that helps get us there. We're going to discuss seven different de-escalation strategies. The first one, act calm. There is a reason this is listed first. Acting calm is the single most important de-escalation strategy for parents and teachers. Having a calm demeanor and a tone of voice helps us set the tone for the child. Even research suggests that appearing externally calm can help reduce aggression. Acting calm can be incredibly difficult since challenging behaviors in the classroom aren't calming at all from an educator's perspective, or if there is chaos in the home with other siblings, those all heighten our emotions as well. Imagine a child yelling or swearing. Your heart might, beat, heart might beat faster and blood pressure might rise. It's a stressful situation. Of course, the goal is to help calm the child. This is why it is critical to model the calm that we want the child to feel. One important mantra to remember, act calm even if you're not. Not only will this convey a calming message to the child or young adult, but it also gives you time to use strategies to calm down too. Some examples to help you as the adult feel more calm during challenging situations include practicing deep breathing, uh, using positive self-talk, thinking of something calming like your favorite dog or vacation spot, and then take a, take a break, walk away, or switch out with the other parent. Number two on our list of strategies is give a choice. Giving choices helps children feel more in control of their own actions. It helps empower kids and teens, building on their self-advocacy. So often, children act out in negative ways because they don't feel they actually have a choice. By giving them a choice, we are reminding them that they are in control. Choices also reduce the chance for a power struggle. Some examples of choices to help de-escalate a situation might include do you want to do your work at your desktop or standing by the counter? Would you rather read with your group or go back and read, go back to your desk and read on your own? Um, choose any five questions to answer and then you can take a break. So that would be an example if they're doing their homework and the situation is starting to escalate. Number three, give space and wait time. Our brains don't think clearly when we're overwhelmed by strong emotions. There is scientific reason for that. When we experience strong feelings, the amygdala in our brain takes over, activating our fight, flight, and freeze response. At the same time, this response can override the part in our brains that help with decision-making. 
from a survival point of view, this is important. It's what allows us to survive in life-threatening situations. The problem is that teens and kids with growing brains are still learning how to manage those emotions. This is why giving space and time is crucial. Kids and teens can't think clearly in the moment when they are overwhelmed or upset. Trying to rationalize with them can sometimes be met with more resistance, possibly even escalating the situation more. Giving space and wait time isn't about sending a child to time out. It is letting them know that you are here for them in a compassionate way while also recognizing their need for calm time on their own. Sometimes a little space and quiet go a long way. Try some strategies and phrases to give space and wait time. For example, you could say, I'm here when you need me, but I'm going to give you some space. I can tell you feel upset right now. Take some time to yourself and I'll check back. Just politely state the expectation and walk away. Number four, listen and repeat to what was said. Actively listening to kids when they are upset is a key de-escalation strategy because we all want and need to be heard. Here are some things to consider when practicing active listening with kids and teens who are upset. You can prompt with questions. What happened? Can you tell me about what's going on? Do you want to talk about it? Be compassionate. Remind them that you care and you want to listen. Give your full attention. For smaller children, it helps to kneel down and be on eye level with them. Don't interrupt. Let them share what they need to. Repeat back what you've heard. This mirroring approach can help kids feel calm and listened to. And then validate their feelings. Let them know that you understand and can see their perspective. Five, say, let's talk about this later. Saying, let's talk about this later is a de-escalation strategy for a few different reasons. It pauses the conflict, giving critical calm down time to the child who is struggling. Also, this technique lets others around, including other children, know that you aren't ignoring the challenging behaviors. You are just addressing them at a more appropriate time. It's a win-win that helps reduce the chance for a power struggle in the moment. Number six, invite them to join a calm activity. Helping kids and teens regain their calm is an important goal of de-escalation. There are many coping strategies and activities children can try. Reading, drawing, mindful breathing, journaling, and exercising, just to name a few. Of course, it can be difficult for children and teens to engage in these calming activities on their own when they are overwhelmed. This is why it's important to give them time. This is why it's important to invite them to join a calming activity or co-regulate. Co-regulation is setting a positive and supportive tone, modeling a calming activity, and encouraging others to join. You might say, I'm just going to sit here in color. Feel free to join me when you are ready. Even if kids and teens don't join to start, many times they will just sit with some time and some space. Another important note is when a child is frustrated or overwhelmed, this isn't time to teach new coping skills or strategies. If you notice a child is struggling with engaging in calming activities, like the coloring, positive self-talk, deep breathing, It might be helpful to teach and practice these skills at a later time when the child or teen is calm. And this brings us to number seven, change the subject to a more positive one. Changing the subject is a strategy to help invite calm into the moment. When kids and teens feel more calm, they're better able to process information, problem solve, and work through challenges. It's important to note that changing the subject to a more positive one needs to be done thoughtfully. A strong relationship should already exist since you don't want the child to feel you are ignoring their current needs. The idea is to calm the child by talking about something else that makes the child feel happy and calm. A few conversation starters to help change the subject might include, let's look at pictures of blank together, photos of any favorite item or animal, Or can you tell me about soccer, for example, or a favorite activity of theirs? These prompts and questions should be tailored to the individual child. Above all else, do what works in the moment. De-escalation strategies are going to work differently in different situations for different children. Keep the strategies in your toolbox to help struggling children work through escalating situations in the future. 
Thanks for taking the time to listen to our training today. Have a great day. If you have any questions about any of the strategies that was discussed today, or if you have questions about any challenging behaviors, please give us a call at the number on the screen, or you feel free to visit our website. Also, if you wouldn't mind taking um, a moment to please take our survey using the QR code on the screen. Thanks again.